I would say good morning, but it is neither good nor morning, right? It's 12.30 now, so we're at, uh, we're past noon. So, all right, let's get started. All right, so uh, my name is Larry Pesci. I'm going to be talking to you about some uh, password cracking stuff. Uh, and, and quite honestly, it's a little bit about basics. And, but uh, we need to bring it back to basics to, to get started. So let's have some fun. Okay? I, if we're not having fun at our jobs, it's not the right job. All right, so all my password hash, I bring my, sorry, all my password cracking brings the hashes to the yard. So you get the idea. Okay, so now I'm going to bring it Spider-Man, okay? Just about every one of these slides from here on out contains Spider-Man memes. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so you know the theme, you know, all my password hashes brings the boys to the yard. Let's start this right. Hold on. We, this is important. This is really important. All right, we'll do it this way. You guys hear that okay? Well, none of these is my car, but we promise these scumbags a show. Thank you for coming. <laughs> All right, now let's get a little serious. Only a little, All right? Ah, oh, that's not what I want. I can't even computer this. No, <laughs> there we go. All right, so a little bit about me. A little bit about me. Uh, so I'm a uh, penetration tester, hardware hacker, all the all the things. Uh, Eddie totally awesome company called InGuardians. Uh, so we do all that type of type of thing. And a uh, bunch of my uh, my brethren are here. Hi, Don. One of our guys couldn't be here, so he's uh, actually FaceTimed in. So that's what FaceTime is for, right? So, hi, Don. Okay. All right. Hi. Everybody say hi, Don. Ready? One, two, three. Hi, Don. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> You guys rock. On another note, when you get invited to Crystal Method's after party, it is not a challenge to drink all of their booze. Okay, we'll leave it at that. All right, so uh, I do all this stuff for uh, for In Guardians. I, I, I love my In Guardians family; they're totally awesome. Uh, I'm also one of the guys that mans the password cracking rig. And quite honestly, when I first started manning the password cracking rig, I had no idea what I was doing. Some might argue that I still don't. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to you know, impart what I've learned over the last two years to, to you guys as well. Uh, I'm also a certified SANS, SANS instructor. I've been teaching for SANS for, I want to say, five or six years now. I, it's, it's all blur, and it's, lot, it's lots of fun. Um, so I, I, I love teaching folks. And, and to that mantra, um, we take the SANS approach at the, uh, the Paul Security Weekly podcast. Uh, 
for those of you who have listened. Um, we want to give you guys something that you can take back to your office and uh, do sort of immediately and uh, affect that type of change. Um, so we've uh, been doing the Paul Security Weekly thing. Uh, this October 16th, we have a entire day podcast. Entire day, like 12 hours. Why? Because it's our 10 year anniversary. We've been doing this thing for 10 years. Thank you, thank you. And when we first, when we did the first one and someone asked for a second one, you know, we were shocked that anybody listened to this crap. We're still shocked that anybody listens to this crap, so thank you. Thank you for those that, that do. Okay. Um, and, and unrelated to this talk, I'm also a, uh, an extra class ham radio operator. Uh, my understanding is that at 1.30, after this talk is over, they're doing some ham radio exams. Where? I'm not exactly sure. They're going to text me during the talk is to tell me where I need to show up. Downstairs in Aqueduct. Beautiful. All right, so I'll find my way there afterwards. All right, so I apologize a little bit of eye chart on this one. A um, little bit of disclaimer. See, I told you. I told you we're going to do Spider-Man memes through the whole thing. A um, little bit of disclaimer. So what, what this talk is, what this talk is not, um, there, there's really no right way to do password cracking. This is what I've found that works for me. And quite honestly, I don't have all the answers. So uh, I'd love to hear from, from more of you afterwards. My contact info is going to be at the end of the slide, and I want to hear what works for you as well. Okay. Um, so in, in this talk, we're going to be talking uh, fairly simple hashes, uh, you know, NTLM, LM. Well, not so much LM because we have full uh, rainbow tables for those. We're not going to talk rainbow, chain, uh, rainbow tables. We're going to more approach from the sort of brute force sort of standpoint. Um, simple hashes, uh, and we can make these complicated, and we'll make some notes on that as well. Okay. So we can apply all of the principles that I'm going to talk about in this talk to more complex hashes that take a lot more, uh, a lot more horsepower to brute force, something like uh, WPA2, pre-shared key, um, bcrypt, and all that type of stuff. It's just going to be nowhere near as fast. Okay. So in order to, for us to meet sort of the goals for the discussion of this talk, um, we're, we're not going to talk about a couple of things. One of those is sort of multi-byte input, input. So uh, no support for Unicode. We're going to be talking about ASCII text passwords uh, and, and those types of things. So no multi-language packs, no uh, Unicode support. Uh, but there's some really great papers uh, out there. Uh, one of them, uh, Team Hashcat, um, from a password cracking competition uh, where they uh, expanded some of the tools to support uh, multi-byte password hashing. And it was fascinating read, fascinating read. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to, this is essentially password cracking 101. Hey, so let's talk a little bit about our problem. Okay, dear diary, my pencil is not working, right? Hey, they're going to get worse, I promise. There's one, there's two that I didn't include because they were just totally inappropriate and awesome at the same time, right? All right, so. What happens? We're on a pen test, and we've now got this huge list of hash passwords. How, how do we make these into real passwords that we, can, that we can use? Well, my original approach was, great, take this list and fire them off for brute force. And they go through one through seven password, one through seven character passwords in a couple of hours, and then the eight character password shows up, and it says it's going to finish in a week. No, my assessment is only five days. This is, this is not working. This is not working. And if it gets, and of course, what happens? So Larry gets to that seven character password and gets to the eight. It's going to take a week to finish. And I close the RDP session to my password cracking rig. Yeah, I said RDP. It's on Windows because it's easy. Okay. And then what happens? I forget about it. Next assessment, I need a password crack come up. And I go back and, hey, look, the last job from a month ago is still running. You know how many times I've done that? Yeah, it keeps my basement warm. Okay, so uh, the brute force is great, but it quickly becomes very overwhelming and, quite honestly, a little bit unmanageable when we start getting to uh, passwords that are potentially eight characters or longer. So we've got a couple of ways we can address this, and one of them is by throwing money at the problem. Well, the password cracking rig that that I have control of is my password cracking rig. It does not belong to work, but we get to use it. Um, the big thing is, is that I built it to do altcoin mining. Yeah, I got, I got lucky. I was started doing altcoin, so cryptocurrency uh, mining, uh, right at the time uh, when Dogecoin took off. 
I, yeah, I started and I had about 300,000 doge. And then uh, they started uh, doing uh, requests for donations to send the uh, Jamaican bobsled team to the Olympics. They qualified but didn't have funds to make it. So they started taking donations of Dogecoin. So the price of Doge skyrocketed. Cashed out, baby. <laughs> so more importantly, you cash out Doge uh, for Bitcoin, and then you sell the Bitcoin. I, I made enough at least to be able to uh, pay for the entire rig, so the rig ended up being free. I just got lucky. That's the, the thing about volatile markets. So sure, we can throw lots of money at the problem. Um, the problem that I have is my chief financial officer, sorry, Jay, not you, my chief financial officer is, is stingy. Um, she's the kind of person that will separate two-ply toilet paper so you get more toilet paper. Okay. Yeah, she, all right, she's not quite that bad. So my chief financial officer is the wife. Uh, every purchase that I have to make on over $100 has to be run by her, which, by the way, when you start learning budgeting and uh, bu budget justification, this is great for working with your significant other for justifying toys because you have to go through the same argument. But honey, it takes money to make money. Okay. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Because then you have to go into the justification as to why. Yeah, no, it works a lot. Well, at least with my wife. I mean, my, my CFO, right? Okay. So some of the other things that I found when I first got getting started was that, you know, I go to, go to Google and uh, I start searching on password cracking. And what comes up? Well, here's how you run a tool. Here's all the technical options you need for to, to run the tool. But very, very little on the actual methodology. And that's that's what I want to share with you, the, the methodology that I've been working on that, that I found works really well. Um, and, and a big thanks to, to lots of folks. Uh, uh, Dan King down front, we had some conversations about what works, and some of it's based on that. Um, some folks from uh, Hack Naked TV, uh, Bo Bullock, uh, lots of his methodology. And, you know, talking with lots of folks and seeing what worked for them and sort of combining that those approaches. All right, so some of the goals. Quite honestly, <laughs> it's time for ponies. All right, so the, the goals are is to get just enough passwords to make our, our assessment and our penetration test be successful. Okay. Unfortunately, there's always going to be that jerk with a 32-character password. Guess what? We ain't getting that one. And most of the times, we don't need to. Okay. Because there will be that one guy that's a domain admin. He's not so smart, or she's not so smart. Okay. Uh, so the, the problem becomes is we can crack lots of password for lots of accounts, we really need the one password for that one or two accounts that's really going to get us further in the organization. Okay, So it's not about cracking all the passwords, but it's attempting to get real close because we need that one or two account, those one or two accounts, the right ones out of many. Okay, So most of the folks in many organizations haven't really figured out what makes up a good password. Correct battery horse staple, right? You guys know the XKCD comic? Yes. Add that to your word list. Okay. Seriously, add those to your word list. All right. So most of the, the good folks in organizations haven't really figured out what a good password is, even though they may have been instructed as to what a good password is. But we're humans, right? How many of you are lazy? Yeah, all of us. No, you, whether or not you know it, you're lazy. Um, Okay, you're just <laughs> beautiful. You're just too lazy to raise your hand. Thank you, sir. I, I, I rest my case. Okay, so we don't necessarily need to get all the passwords, and we just need to find that one. A and some of those are likely going to be based on folks that have really lazy passwords. Okay, so aiming for, for, for me, aiming for a 65 to 85% recovery rate for a, a huge list of hashes is great. You know, statistically speaking, we've got a really good chance of finding that one or two accounts that we need that is really going to help us. However, 10% is heck of a lot more realistic. Why? Because we do chained attacks. We find 10% of those passwords. We find those 10%. We use those 10% on multiple machines, and we pivot. We pivot mercilessly with those 10% to 
to find that one machine that has delegation tokens as domain admin, or to find that one machine that has clear text credentials in some database or in some text file that gets us SA, and then we can do command shell. So it's about finding really that 10%, but if you can get 65 to 85%, it's game over, man. Okay. So we start talking about like password spraying, and we're, we're not gonna talk about password spraying here. You guys are probably very familiar with the attack. But if we're going to go for that 10%, take the 100 most common passwords in a word list and run those first. Why? You might get 5%. You're halfway there. And of those 5%, it, it may already be game over. And how long has that 100 password attempt for a word list taken? Like three minutes. And it's done. Okay. Now you guys can leave because that's, that's like all of it, right? Yeah, no. All right. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start with that, that word list. Okay. So in my opinion, John the Ripper is a great start. I love John the Ripper. Uses word lists and does a whole bunch of hash types. You don't even need a GPU to run it. So I can run it in a virtual machine and have, have it go to town while I'm working on other stuff. Okay. We need a word list. And quite honestly, I love word lists. Why? They're ASCII, they're small, and Ron is here, and Ron has awesome word lists, and it's going to get better. But those word lists are words that people use, okay, in the public and with on sites that have been disclosed that do not have password policies in many cases. Um, we need to get a little bit better at, at some of those word lists. Ouch. Uh, sorry, a little bit of an eye chart, okay. But... Stop crying and look at my spider balls. Okay. This is probably one of the most inappropriate ones that I've got. All right. All right. So CPU is great in a pinch. We can use John the Ripper on some word lists. Um, might get us that one account, maybe 5%. And uh, that's going to be really, really good for us. But we need to do a little bit better. So if we start using uh, GPUs, uh, whether they be AWS or, or something other, um, that that's really really good. However, that's going to require us to do a little bit of time up front. Uh, we're going to have to you know spend some money, get the CFO to approve it. Uh, we're going to have to uh, figure out which operating system we want to use. And quite honestly, I spent a month trying to get my uh, drivers for my uh, uh, graphics cards to work on Linux. Yeah, because I suck at Linux, but I love Linux at the same time. What's that? Forget it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, but Windows. What can you do? Download, click install, get next, next, next. Hey, it works, right? Yeah, so yeah, my password cracking rig is on Windows. It's about the only Windows box that I have, okay? Uh, but I'm actually gonna try to change that. I got some, uh, some great feedback from some folks um, from some of the, the crypto coin mining stuff. Um, they use a, uh, a distro that you can install called Pimp. Yeah, getpimp.org. Yeah, it's got all of the mining stuff for cryptocurrency. These guys are awesome. They do all the research. They're totally into figuring out the best bang for your buck and, and for your energy cost. And they, they do lots of stuff about figuring out which cards are the best. And they've got this distro that is fully configured. Install it, go. What do you do? You install Hashcat and John the Ripper on this distro, and you're done. Okay, so I'm going to move to that. So some of the things that now, if let's say you're at a client site and, and you need to do some password cracking, um, what, do you, what do you do? You need to have secure remote access to this box so that you can submit hashes to it. Sometimes this is easier said than done, especially when depending on what the customer is filtering or not. Okay. Now, my rig is modest, to say the least. I didn't spend more than $500 on my rig, and it has three GPUs, including a case, which is totally totally ghetto. Why? I went to my workshop and cut some wood with my table saw <laughs> and some threaded rod and some nuts and some zip ties. Yeah. It doesn't have to be expensive. And quite honestly, it, this is good enough for me. Um, and it works. Now, you can spend lots of money. Okay. What's that? Not as much as you think, but you can spend lots of money. For example, um, Evil Mog is giving a talk, um, Confessions of an Altcoin Miner, or a Crypto Coin Miner, uh, right after this. Yeah, crypto, cr yeah, Confessions of a Crypto Cluster guy. Yeah. 
I was talking with him uh, earlier and on IRC and fascinating. You want to bring that to the next level? Password cracking? Go see his talk after this. Okay, great follow on. And it would just happen to be that it was that it was good. Okay. All right. So we need a word list, right? This is where a lot of my methodology centers is around a word list. Okay. So creating a word list is more art than science. Okay. This gets fun. And it, it, it to me, it's a challenge to think about generating these word lists. Okay. So we take a word list and we have a great base, and now we need to modify these. Okay. So Get ourselves a, a word list, okay? Rock you. Thanks, Ron, at skullsecurity.org. Woo! And then wait for the ashleymadison.txt. It's coming. Winter's coming. Wait for it. Okay. Um, some other ones, um, zato.net, the, the gentleman that said, hey, I'm going to release 10 million passwords. What's that? Mark Burnett. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, this might be a little overkill. Yeah, a 10 million passwords is a pretty decent sized file. Chances are you're, you're, you can probably do a better job starting small and, and ramping up. Okay. So some of the things that I think about is take that basic list, and it's going to be missing some. And, and I like to tailor each one of my lists per customer, uh, depending on geographical area and, and you name it, and think about how people think. So add the basics if they aren't already there. Um, add seasons. Um, go to uh, uh, the the census to Census Bureau to get all of the popular baby names, because um, quite honestly, people name give their passwords after their kids, right? So uh, pick the most popular baby names for the last twenty years or longer. Um, now let's take some of those and add it. Okay. So let's add some structure to this base foundation. Okay, I'm still not Batman. And then uh, let's build the word list before we add any elite speak rules or any munging or any of those types of things. So for each engagement or each victim that I'm working with, I think about where they are and think about what they do and build my word list based on, on these actions. So find out where they are, get a list of all the local cities and towns because it's a good a good chance that the folks that live there are going to be commuting to an office and they live somewhere nearby. So get the list of towns nearby, uh, pick local sports teams, uh, sports teams members. I, I don't do sports ball at all, so this is the part that I struggle on. So like, all right, which, which sports teams are here in Louisville? I have no idea. Okay. And, and if you answer me, uh, it'll, it'll get lost almost immediately. Uh, pick some uh, names for local landmarks. Um, because quite honestly, lots of stuff gets added, uh, named after this. Think about, you leave the hotel and you take a left out the front door. What's that area called? Fourth Street Live, right? Okay. What do you think that someone in that in an organization here locally to Louisville has a password of Fourth Street or Fourth Street Fourth Street Live in, in their uh, in their list? Probably a good chance. So take some local landmarks. The other one that I found is ask someone when you're on site or when you're doing that kickoff call, hey, what's the food I have to have when you're there? Okay. So I was in, um, I'm trying to remember where I was. I was at one of our customer sites, and, and I'm, the, where I was was escaping me. I traveled too much. Uh, and I said, what's the local food I have to have? And they said, Geta. G-O-E-T-T-A. Yeah. Cincinnati. So guess what went in my word list? G-O-E-T-T-A. Get up. And then I brought four pounds home with me. Oh my God, that's good stuff. Yeah. I had a refrigerator in my hotel room, put it in the freezer. Good to go. Made it, made it home in the airplane, put it back in the freezer. Oh my gosh. Ask what the local food is. One, you can, you, you, you get this nice bikini figure, right? Swimsuit season is, is, is coming. Um, and then you also have awesome food as well. And you get great stuff for your word lists. Okay. Because if I like Geta, what are the chances are that you like Geta? Maybe that's your password. Okay. All right. Um, grab the grab the uh, list from the the uh, the company itself. Um, uh, cool. C E W L. Um, totally rocks. Uh, we did an assessment not all that long ago in which their Wi-Fi password was in fact made up of words from their web page. Really, really. 
Um, it wasn't intentional. They were sort of random selected words. But yeah, both of those words were on their web page concatenated together. Use cool, munge those, game over. Okay. Also, take some of those variations of the company name. So, uh, you know, Google, what happens when you mistype the URL and you get Google, G O O L E? Yeah. Put those in the word list too. Okay. So, I'm going to build a custom word list for every engagement and then sort of build on those as well. So, we're going to pillage, plunder, and deliver chocolate rain. All right. <laughs> some of you just got it, right? Some of you just got it. Okay. So, great. We compromised the system to get hashes, right? Where did they come from? They just didn't fall out of the sky. Well, maybe they did. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was really bad. Okay. All right. So, they didn't just fall out of the, si the sky. We got them from a system. Use that system. Use the resources that we've got. Okay, so pillage the village. You know, my 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 good friend and um, coworker Mike Poor did an entire talk on that. Pillage the village. Find what you can get from these systems that are helpful to you. Okay, so uh, go to my documents folder. Go to the documents folder. Take everything and use those and find some really good stuff in there for adding to word lists. Okay, now. Depending on which system we get access to, well, if you get access to a domain controller, why are you here, right? Uh, you, you've got hashes. Go um, for, for that. Um, some other stuff, uh, domain controllers, maybe not so much. Hopefully, the domain controllers domain control and don't do file shares. It's a great joke, right? File servers, file serve. Firewalls, firewall. Web servers, web serve. Don't put them together. I find that a lot. But... Domain controller isn't necessarily going to have a lot of good stuff on it. Um, so if we have access to other things such as uh, a file server that has a massive file share, oh, 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 everything. Uh, and then also uh, user workstations where they're allowed to file, uh, save files locally, uh, grab those as well. Okay. Contents of files are awesome. It's awesome if you can find passwords.txt. Not going to happen a lot, but sometimes it will. But take all the contents from their Word documents and so forth. The other one that I love, and this kind of blew my mind when I was thinking about this, was file names, not the file contents, the file names. So think about this. Yes, grab all the file names from the system. Uh, certainly Windows System 32 and all those types of things are going to be standard, but grab the stuff from the user's home directory and or their My Documents folder. File names. So think about this. How many people give their password of their firstborn child? Right? No, they're not supposed to, but they do, and then they add some letters and numbers to it and those types of things. So my, my oldest daughter, uh, she'll be eight in, in about two weeks. Uh, her name is Corinne. It's spelled a little different, so you wouldn't necessarily have that in a normal password list. But what do you think my desktop background is set to a picture of my oldest? And it's in my pictures folder, and it's called corinne.jpg. It's a pretty good chance, because I'm average user, right? The file name, not the contents. The file name is corinne.jpg. What do you think that my password may be based now on, you know, my oldest daughter, you know, say Corinne 42. Grab the file names because those are those are huge. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, um, uh, it's a uh, a script or so, sorry, some Bash on, on Linux uh, to be able to grab file names. So doing ls recursively and stripping some names, uh, stripping some stuff off. Uh, my good friend uh, Tom Liston would say, "Hey, look, you have a problem, and you use sed and awk to fix that. Now you have two problems." Okay, uh, no, I, I used awk to, to fix this. Um, the first awk statement is to remove all the spaces and uh, my good friend, Don Weber, hi Don, yells at me every time I put a space in a file name. So I took that into account and stripped at least seven spaces in file names because yeah, I'm that guy, sorry Don. Now, so it'll strip all the spaces out of those file names after we get that from the ls command, uh, and then give us the file name without the extension. A word list. Okay. We can do the same thing on Windows, but oh my god, 
Windows? No, no. Text processing is so hard on Windows, it's not even funny. Okay. All right, sweet. We've got a word list. We've got our city names, we've got our baby names, we've got seasons, if they're not already there. Um, we, we've got sports teams, we've got names from uh, actors on said sports teams. Uh, we've got lists from files, we've run cool. We've got file names. Now what? Okay. Most organizations that I go into don't allow users to use strict dictionary words. There has to be some complexity. So let's use some complexity. Let's add special characters. Let's add numbers. Let's concatenate some numbers. Let's do elite speak. All of those types of things. How do we make that happen? I actually ran into uh, uh, someone uh, was actually had to log into their VPN and had to create a password. And it says, your password must contain one uppercase, one number, and one special character. So I included a question mark. They said, no, you have not included a special character. Yeah, who knew? A question mark is not a special character. My experience, yeah. I had to add a different special character. An exclamation point worked just fine. It changed the way you say the password, though. I mean, okay. All right, so we need to add all of this extra bits, numbers, lead speak, uh, special characters. Um, so let's go and, and munge this basic word list. So how do we do that? Okay, all right. Okay, so we can do this in a couple of different ways. Uh, we can do character replacement. Um, we can change capitalization. Uh, we can do character addition, uh, concatenation, so forth. Uh, numbers and special characters, we can add them at the beginning, at the end. Um, sweet. We now have a really robust list. The problem is, is that we've started with a, a modest list, and now we're going to do all the things to it, and we're going to end up with this massive list that's going to take forever to run through. We need to be smart about it. Okay, so we've got sort of two ways we can do this, and, and it's definitely a phased approach. Start small, run that list, do it again, do some another change to those uh, the base word list, run it again, another change to the word list, run it again. This is not a set it and forget it type of thing. Okay? It requires care and feeding for the entire run of the password cracking job. Now, sure, you can set it and forget it for, say, an hour. So it, it's not going to be one of those things that you want to leave a lot. Okay? So we can add complexity. But if we don't manage that complexity, we're going to end up with a list, a word list that's 100 gig. And that's not, that we're not going to finish that 100 gig word list in the time that our assessment completes. So we need to be smart about it. So how do we do this? Okay. First up, use a little Python. Okay, that's what she said. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to take an upside down dump, right? Okay. All right. So I, uh, one of my uh, coworkers uh, was kind enough to write some Python to generate um, Hashcat and John the Ripper rules. And we're going to talk about that. To do simple character substitution. Okay. Um, and I was thinking about this. I'm like, all right, this, so this is going to crazy do things to my word list. But I thought about it. I'm like, no, it's not going to actually extend the length of the words in the word list because we're doing substitution. So do this first. This, this becomes important. It does add words to the word list, but it doesn't increase the length of those words. Uh, so those uh, word list tools are in our, our GitHub. Uh, thank you, Jared, who is actually holding Don so that he can see via FaceTime right now. Uh, hi, Don. So uh, <laughs> use uh, all right. So so Don, I'll repeat that for you. Use IPython. Don's all about the IPython. Okay, that's what she said. Okay. All right. So uh, Jared, create a couple uh, Python scripts. Uh, to actually create some rules for us to use within either uh, Hashcat, OCL Hashcat, and or John the Ripper to do simple character substitution. And we can change those character substitution based on where we want it in the word and or uh, lengths and, and all that good stuff. Okay, I, and so how we use that and then we use the rules within uh, Hashcat and or John output. Okay, so then we end up with some more word lists. Okay. All right, so some complex word lists. I'm glad you guys are laughing. Come on, it's too early, right? It's noon-ish, right? All right. So 
doing complex wordless modification is is interesting. We have a bunch of different ways we can do that. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the tools that we can use to do that coming up soon. Okay. Um, we can use John the rule, uh, uh, John the Ripper uh, word list rules to do some munging. Specifically, my favorite are the uh, core logic uh, rules that they used uh, for the DEF CON 2010 uh, Crack Me If You Can Challenge. They're fully published. They're out there. Add them to your john.conf and then uh, start using some of those word lists. But don't use all of the munging rules at the same time. Why? You will end up with a terabyte word list. And that's not what we want. That will get us all the passwords in all of the time. It will take a year to run through. And there's tons of, of word lists there. Uh, you know, pick judiciously. Okay, so uh, grab those core logic rules, add them to your configuration file, and then pick which rule that you actually want to run. Okay, if we run all of them, your your word list is going to be way too long, and it's it's not going to work for us. But we can certainly take that and pass this to some of the, the next step. It's going to be massive, and it's going to be very unmanageable from a password tracking perspective. Okay. However, we can run each one of our individual word lists through a, a, a single pass and generate multiple word lists and run multiple cracking jobs that will be really speedy and then have lots of care and feeding. Okay. So here's how we use those word lists with John to enter it, uh, take a base word list and then munge those based on our rule. Okay. All right. So we have a word list that we've had all sorts of fun with, with uh, simple password substitution, simple um, character lead speech substitution, and then we've run it through some, uh, some John uh, to do uh, core logic uh, replacement and concatenation and all sorts of other fun stuff as well. Okay. The problem is that we've got a word list that's huge. And it runs from one character to 20 plus or more character words. This is going to take forever. And what happens if the, the password policy is only eight characters? Do we really care about one through seven? No. Let's fix that. Let's split those rule, these word lists, into characters of various lengths. Okay. So this was my duh moment. Right? This was the duh moment. We can run a really fast run of password cracking based on a word list if we only care about specific length for one set of length one set of length of words. If we can make a guess that at least in the organization the password um, length is a minimum of eight characters, don't run one through seven. Sure, it, it may not take all that much time, maybe 30 minutes, depending, but that's 30 minutes that we don't have. Okay, Start at eight characters, run a alert list, r list of eight characters, let that go, have it spend a couple of hours, maybe a day, move on to nine characters, move on to ten, yeah, and do it individually. Okay, so it's definitely going to be an iterative process. Process. This is going to require care and feeding. Okay, so how do we split this word list? We take this massive word list, okay, and we're going to split it into multiple lists of specific characters. Okay, and uh, thank you, Adam and Don, for coming up with some totally awesome PowerShell. And in fact, I took both of your PowerShell commands and combined them together for epic win. I'm sorry, I didn't test it beforehand. So I, I don't know if it actually works, but I trust these guys. I trust these guys. So sure, use awk. Now we have two problems, right? Okay. Use awk to take a word list on Linux and split that word list out into multiple word lists with specific length words so that we're now running an eight-character word list for an eight-character password and a nine-character word list for a nine-character password. Well, great. Run that in a loop to do that word list for multiple characters and have an increment. Okay, I, I was lazy. I didn't get there. Okay, on Windows it's a little bit harder. On DOS, yeah, get bent. Get, don't do this on DOS. Do it in PowerShell instead. Okay, PowerShell is the new command prompt, right? Yeah, go that way instead. Okay, great. Let's be smart about even generating these word lists. How do we know that eight characters is the minimum? Let's look at some password policies. Okay, let's be smart about it, right? So how do we get smart about it? We ask for the password policy for the organization that we're testing. Wait, that's like, that's like a forbidden rule, right? You can't ask the company you're trying to hack for their password policy. 
Hey, can you tell me your password policy? No, you have to figure that out on your own. Wait, we can figure that out on our own. We have access to a system that we pulled word lists from. Where did we get the hashes from, right? Chocolate rain. And where did we get that hash word, password hash list from? Ask the system what their password policy is. Be super smart about it, okay? Is complexity enforced? Great, we need to do, do complexity. What's the minimum password length? 12 characters, great. I don't need to do eight, nine, 10, and 11 character passwords. That reduces our time significantly. So pillage the village some more. If the customer won't tell you, that's the easy way, get it yourself. Okay, so on uh, Linux, we can look at, um, on uh, Debian-based systems, we can look at uh, login.defs in the Etsy directory, and uh, it tells us what the password policy is. Okay, so in this case, um, we've got a bunch of stuff about what our password looks like. The minimum length is 12 characters. Okay, and uh, we talk about what is what makes up the complexity rules, the L credit and the U credit and the D credit. Okay, um, sure. What in the heck does all that mean? Okay, great. Gives you a number of points based on the complexity credit for when you pick complexity rules. So now we can start determining what some of our complexity looks like from, from our Linux systems. Okay, we can also do that from Windows. We can get a little bit using the net accounts command, uh, but more importantly, PowerShell. Okay, PowerShell can query all sorts of good stuff using the uh, AD default domain password commandlet, and it will tell us what the default or what the current uh, password policy is on the domain. Now we can craft our word list based on what the d uh, Active Directory is telling us about. And in this case, um, the lockout threshold is five attempts. The minimum password length is seven characters. And the last 24 characters are not used and complexity is enabled. Okay, chances are complexity enabled is gonna be what? Three out of four. So uppercase, uh, lowercase, number, and special character. So we can, we can now make some good judgments about what we need to do for uh, some munging rules. Okay, great. Brute force it, right? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm busy. I gotta do something else right now, hold on. All right, yeah. So Hashcat is totally awesome for some of this stuff. Um, doing brute force attacks, straight brute force attacks. Yeah, it works great, but you spend hours, months, days waiting for this to finish. Let's use that word list to be really smart about it. It's also great for doing masked brute force attacks. Take our word list and apply additional rules to it. And, and I've got some great examples for this. So, for example, you can observe passwords for something. Maybe you see them on post-it notes. Uh, maybe you're doing some assessment work for some wireless stuff and they're using Verizon MiFi's or something of the like where they have default credentials from the manufacturer and they're all based on a specific pattern. So if you can observe patterns in the organization, this becomes awesome, especially if they don't change the defaults and they leave it based on the, the sticker on the, batter, on, on the back. So now we observe the patterns, find out what the minimum password is, find out what the maximum length is. Let's look at how they structure those patterns. For example, go to the Verizon store, and what do you do? You start every Verizon store you go into, even if you don't need to. If you're in the mall, go there. Don't buy anything. Just turn over the MiFi's and start looking at the default passwords. Find your friends. Look at theirs. Start building a, a collection of what those passwords look like. And in this case, we even have some stuff publicly available, i.e. MAC addresses, available in the clear with a monitor, uh, wireless card in monitor mode. So we can start grabbing MAC addresses and even understanding what some of these password portions look like. So uh, this one's a little bit outside case. We can observe some of that stuff in plain text. Okay. In this case for the Verizon MiFi stuff, the passwords are all of the same format. They start with mobile with a capital M, four characters, the last four characters of the MAC address, which we can observe in, the plain, t in plain text, a dash, and then six random numbers. We now have a pattern, okay? So portions known, portions guessable, one separator, and then six random numbers. That is a 17 character password. Where's the entropy? There's not a lot, there's not a lot. There's 10 characters of entropy, the MAC address, 
which really doesn't become entropy because we can observe it. So six characters of entropy. But we can be really dumb about passwords with this entropy. So choosing the method for some of this guessing the entropy is really helpful. Thinking about how we do uh, password masking with Hashcat varieties is important. Okay, so think about this one. So the first options work with either Hashcat or OCL Hashcat. Um, we take the unknown hash for this, this wireless network and we know that uh, mobile capital M is the first portion of the password based on the pattern that we've observed. We know that the next four characters are the last four of the MAC address, which we can observe. So we, we know those. And then followed by a dash. Great. We can now guess the next six digits. So replace the password we're going to guess with mobile ED uh, ME for, for the uh, dash for the known portion. And then do digits. With this currently, the first example uh, at the top of the slide, that will guess passwords for mobile EDME dash from 0 to 99999. But we've observed passwords. They never are one numeric character. They are never two numeric characters. They are never three, four, five. Okay? They're always six. So we've wasted a bunch of time testing between one numeric character and six numeric characters. Be smart about it. Okay. So with the second example, we're setting the max, the password minimum length to 17 characters. Okay. 17 characters is what we observed as the example. So start there. Don't test for mobile EDME dash zero because it will never be that password based on what we've observed. It will always be six characters, not one, two, three, four, or five. So start at six characters. Set the maximum length. So we add the uh, dash, uh, dash dash pw min to 17. So now instead of testing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 9999, it will start at six zeros. Oh my gosh, we just took like an hour out of our password cracking methodology. Sweet. Hey. All right. Hey, I'm actually doing pretty well for time. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, she lied. Put the milkshake on the porch and nobody showed up. Okay. But you know what? You guys all showed up, and thank you. You guys are awesome. And thank you for coming to DerbyCon. You know, I, this is one of my favorites. So I could probably go on and on and on and on and on about this stuff, but wanted to give you guys some of the, the basics to at least get you started and start building your own methodology. Give you guys a base, because quite honestly, that was the part that was the, the hardest for me to figure out what what how do I get started in this? Great, I've got a tool and I've got a password cracking rig. Now what? Okay. So with that, um, I wanted to give you guys some some base. I, I'd love to hear feedback. I'd love to hear what works for you guys. Um, and, and quite honestly, I was shocked how well word lists work. Okay. It, it's awesome. One, they're they're small. They're text. Fill up your drive with word lists. Delete them when you're done. Keep the base because they're going to be different per customer. Okay. This is a completely complex problem. We can go on and on and on, and we can throw money at the situation. Money's not always the answer. You know, money can't buy you happiness. No, yes, it can. Money can buy me things that make me happy, right? From humans other and otherwise. I mean, that would be wrong. Okay. All right. Urgh. So this is what worked for me. I'd love to hear uh, more from you folks. Um, we can use those word lists, great, with John the Ripper, without a GPU, but apply the same methodologies to something with a GPU. Why? The GPU will just take that word list and calculate those hashes so much faster. But you may not always have access to your GPU. So taking that base and applying it to multiple technologies is awesome. Hey, so with that, thank you. Thank you very much. I promised more Spider-Man memes. And you... Nobody else loves you like I do. Was that render? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was one of the, the Spider-Man memes I didn't include. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see some of the other bad Spider-Man memes, hit me afterwards outside. Because um, I, I don't want to share that with the public audience because some of them are really bad. Yeah, they're they're awesome. So seriously, go see Evil Mog. He's in track four. 
um, to see how you can start using um, uh, password cracking rigs for, for passwords. And he, he's got epic setup. So seriously, a great follow on talk, and it just happened to be timely. So thank you very much. I hope you had fun at DerbyCon. Yes, sir. Question. Oh, by the way, in Guardians, if you're an awesome pen tester and you have really good writing skills, we're hiring. We want you. Seriously. No, come, come see us afterwards. Uh, we have a booth outside. Come see me. Um, we'd love to talk to you. Yeah. Awesome place to work. We're hiring. Yay! Thank you, guys. Hey, we're hiring. <laughs> yes, yes, we are hiring.